What's the word, y'all? I gotta keep it a buck. I've been I've been slacking on this channel when it comes to the recaps. You know, before we even talk about two of the three MVP candidates going head to head or cat 60 or all of this other stuff, let, let's do a little quick real talk because people been asking what the recaps have been. Earlier in the season, it's a lot easier to do recaps because I think that we're like deprived of basketball once we come off that offseason and now we got new faces in, in new places and we're trying to figure out what's gonna fit we're gonna figure out what the decent teams out of good duo so it's easier to do recaps in and as we get longer into the season or deep into the season it's a little bit harder to put things into perspective like yes games today matter with like 15 games left for the season with, with the standings being so tight these games matter like the Cavs winning against the Clippers today matters because the Raptors are playing good, and they're just a game and a half away. So it, it matters, but it's hard to put that into perspective, which means it's difficult for me to make the videos. But I'm going to try my hardest. I'm not promising no everyday thing for the rest of the season, but I'm going to try my hardest to do more recaps. Well, with that being said, let's get to the games. I think the most anticipated game was two of the three MVP candidates going head-to-head. -head. And yes, I say two of the three. I know a lot of people have narrowed it down to a two-man race between Embiid and Jokic, but I still got Giannis in the race. You know what I'm saying? I, I still think there's a punished chance that Giannis can do some things, especially the way he's been playing and the Bucks have been playing very recently. But this was one that I think a lot of people anticipated. This was going to be the one to win it all. Ooh, whoever had a better game and whoever win is going to take home that MVP award. And then one had the better game, but the other won. You know what? These two dudes, the two top centers in the entire NBA, they love each other. Anytime they are asked about each other, it is nothing but love. And that can't be said about every player in the NBA, right? Some players kind of brush each other off. These two dudes legitimately respect each other. So, like, after the game, Jokic said, hey, if I want to be the best, I got to play against the best, so I like doing this. And then Joel and B showed a lot of love to Jokic as well. But, look, this is this. even though the game itself was, was great, Bones Highland with some big shots, George Niang, He's a great shooter, so I'm not mad at him for taking all the shots that he did. Except for that last one, like when he missed the first three and got his own rebound, I know he didn't really recognize that there was two seconds left because it's hard to do that in the, in the, in the heat of the moment. But man, Tyrus Max was wide over top of the key, dog. Just hit that pass, and we might be going over. So the game itself was great. But the duo, the, the, the duo wasn't. And I think it was just heavily favored to Joel Embiid. Now, when I was growing up, um, or let's say my freshman year of high school, I used to try my hardest to get out of class whenever I could so I can go to the library, so I can go to the computers, and I would go to YouTube. And I, I don't know if bro is still around because now that I watch as much basketball as I do, I'm not really going to YouTube looking for highlights. But growing up, there was a guy named Dawkins. And, and, and a lot of y'all know, if you know, you know, Dawkins is one of the kings of NBA highlights. And when I would leave class, I would go to the computer lab, and I would go to Free Dawkins' account vintage Dawkins specifically and be like hey AI versus Vince Carter AI have 40 Vince Carter have 43 I need to watch that I needed I needed a game where both of them had 30 plus and they were going head to head back and we didn't get it so it, it it lived up to the hype as far as games go it just didn't live up to the hype as far as just a duel because Joel B did his thing Jokic did not have a bad game but Joel Embiid's impact was just a lot larger. I mean, I guess you can make the argument for the other way because, well, one of them ended up winning the game. But again, I think that um, that Nikola Jokic's team played a lot better than than uh, Joel Embiid's team. I think the bench scoring was close to 50 to 14 or something like that. Regardless, shout out to Jokic and, and the Denver Nuggets. Bones Highland hits some big shots. Jermichael Green. Um, I, he fell like on his head and I just jumped out of my seat. But he ended up hitting two shots down the stretch. They were really big. But listen. As, as much as the duo of James Harden and Joel Embiid has been decent, the last couple games have been a little bit iffy. You got the one super blowout loss that we talked about versus the Brooklyn Nets. Then they had the loss, um, I'm sorry, the win last night. And I guess, yeah, this was a back-to-back -back for them. And maybe that's one of the reasons why they kind of were lackluster on some of the other things. They they went to overtime against the Orlando Magic, and it just looked, they just did not look good in that win. And I know that Embiid and Harden combined for like 50 points, but they were shooting like 30% from the field as a duo. It's just like now we're finally getting to see some bumps in the road and we're trying to figure out or they have to figure out what they have to do to get through these bumps. But the thing I've been saying to people this season for the Brooklyn Nets, for the for the 76 or two teams that make these big trades, this is not a win or bust season. Of course, you want to win the championship for show for show. But if the if the 76ers don't win a championship this year and they've convinced James Harden to come back, I know the paperwork ain't go through. They still have an entire offseason to construct this team with the way they think is perfect around James and Joel. And one of the rumors at the deadline was like, hey, OKC might be willing to take in Tobias Harris's contract because that $44 million is looking worse and worse by the day, 10 points from him today. Um, taking that contract, and now we open up some space for us to get a guy that's going to fit perfectly around him regardless. This is not a win 
or, or bust season. Unless James Harden decides he want to go somewhere else. But if James Harden could come back, this duo could still play together for multiple, multiple years. You know what I'm saying? But the thing that, that I think, and the playoffs matter a lot for this to be the case, Doc Rivers might get fired. If, if they are a, they don't make it to the conference finals, or even if a conference final exit, I believe that Doc Rivers will probably get fired. Um, today was not one of his best coach games. Um, and, and I know he has a history of blown 3-1 leads and overall rotations not being great. I, I do believe that this might not end great for Doc. If it doesn't end great for the team, the only guy they can really blame, because they're not going to blame the dy dynamic duo because they, they gave up a lot to get these two together, it's going to be Doc. Um, and I think that Mike D'Antoni might be next in line. Regardless, shout out to Jokic, shout out to Bones Highlands, and Michael Green, Matisse Steibel. Listen, I love Matisse Steibel. Um, I made a tweet today about Andre Roberson, right? I, I, I'm just randomly, we were just sitting in traffic and, and I was looking at my phone and I was like, what is Andre Roberson's career high? Just randomly, I just think about Andre Roberson. His career high was 19. He was in the league for what, five, six seasons as a starter? His career high was 19. And, and I tweeted that because I just thought it was a cool, fun fact, right? Andre Roberson started X amount of games in the NBA and he never cracked 20. And people thought I was disrespecting Dre. Uh, Dre, I just, that wasn't my, that wasn't the intent of this. The team's just like, how the hell do you not drop a dub? Mate, I had to be like, okay, who is an NBA player now that is similar to, to Andre Robeson as far as like, I'm an elite level defender, but on offense, don't ask me to do nothing. And that's Matisse Stiebel in today's game. And Matisse Stiebel had a 20-piece his rookie season. So I was just trying to showcase that. Things are just weird. Andre Robeson, man. I thought he was going to be one of those people that got a call during the pandemic where everybody was getting a 10-day. I thought it was going to be him, uh, but he never got a call. So I don't know what he's up to. I don't. I was trying to find him on social media. He don't be posting. So I don't know what he's up to other than I think him and Rachel Demeter are still dating, which all things considered, kind of a W. Speaking of 10-day contracts, something happened today, actually like 20 minutes ago, that um one of, one of the best moments of the year for me specifically, Isaiah Thomas followed me back on Twitter. Yep, yep. I've been a, I've been an IT guy for so very long. Short King, one of the reasons we respect him. Mr. Irrelevant because he was the last pick in the draft. Got nothing re but respect for, for Isaiah Thomas. And today he had four threes in a row in the first half. And I was watching. I was like, let's go. And I tweeted after him, like, proud of you. He hit me with the follow, dog. So a little tear. One little tear. About that said, I'm sorry, um, Hornets fans. I, I kind of. When, when y'all went to overtime or y'all went to halftime, I went to another game, so I can't tell you much about your victory. And I, every time I do a recap, it's like, dang, Kenny, don't spend no time on my team. I got I to gotta pick and choose. We have a nine-game slate. It's hard to watch every single game. So let me move on to the next one, which is the Cavaliers beating the Clippers in an overtime victory. And like I said earlier, this game matters a lot because they desperately needed this one because they had been struggling heavily. They went from a team that at one point was like the three seed in the conference, and now they're fighting for their lives, not to end up in the play-in and, and like this was such a great story for the city it was such a great story for the NBA this underdog team uh, a team that had a janky lineup of three seven footers and they're they're dominating and, and making the playoffs and I think the playoffs are like a lock for them it's just a matter of where they see they needed this win desperately and a lot of it had to do with Evan Moby looking great the 2021 draft class continues to impress um Scotty Barnes had a big game tonight I think he had 16 points in the first quarter against the Lakers I, I kind of turned that game off too so I'm gonna have to box score watch that one but I know he was having a big game but Emo um um oh having Karis Avert back helped a ton and they just needed this win so I'm proud of them it keeps them afloat as far as being the sixth seed at the moment. And, and right now, that's what you, sh you should be gunning for. Trey Young is a absolute demon. This is the second game in the front uh, in a row, if I'm not mistaken, where he had 30-plus points going into the fourth quarter. I think he had 40 points going into the fourth quarter in this one. And it was just a cook session. He just dropped so many incredible dimes. Now, he was going against the Trailblazers, which is not a good team. But he was dropping some crazy dimes across the floor. The flow game was going crazy. I have to show my respect to Josh Hart because I didn't do a recap in the game where he dropped 44. I, I just I, I love to see players that are not known as scorers get the opportunity to be a scorer because listen they started Brandon Williams who's been a surprise it's been a, a solid pickup for them Josh Hart CJ Obi Trenton Wofford and, and and Drew Eubanks somebody go out to take some shots and it's been Josh Hart so a guy has been a perennial like role player who's like I'm a rebound crazy be as a six four power four type dude I'm gonna play some good defense and occasionally take an open jump shot it's cool to see a dude like that get like 
the keys, I guess, and be like, go score some points for us because we can't lose by 40 every single night, right? And to see him do a thing, it just showcases, like, even the NBA role players, if they had the opportunity, could probably average 20-plus. It's just like, I have to play this role because this is the role that's going to get me paid or this is the role that's going to get me a championship. Whatever their aspirations is, if they were put into different roles, they could exceed. And Josh Hart is exceeding in this role. So, um, really cool stuff. Cat's 60. I, I don't know how I buried this, but this is Car Anthony Towns' episode. My apologies. A60 piece. And you know what? I, I have to admit, I was not watching this game live, but I went back. I went back to watch. Um, I got a notification that said Cat Head 50. And I was like, oh, okay, that's dope. And I said, I continued to read. It said, entering the fourth quarter. I was like, whoa. Now, I was trying to figure out. At that point, I think they were up at like 15-ish. And I was like, hmm, how many minutes will he legitimately play in the fourth quarter? At the end of the day, he at least needs to get that 60. 50 is cool, but you need to get that 60. And they did. With like three and a half minutes left, Pop was like, you know what? I'm done. Uh, let me let me pull out my starters. And Cat had just checked back in. And I was looking at my TV like, is, is, is Kroos Finch going to bring him out the game? Because he's going against the end of the bench, guys. Nah, he kept him in. And the, the last shot for the 60 was so crazy. Like, this is so ridiculous to me how good the NBA center is. I've talked about this before, but a decade ago, people were talking about the center position being the worst it had been in the entirety of NBA history. The worst it had been. And just like that, we got Embiid. We got Cat. We got Jokic. We got Bam. We got Rudy. The list goes on and on and on of elite level players at the center position. The last shot for 60 is ridiculous. And you know what? Cat claims to be the greatest cent uh, shooting center of all time. And I will not dispute, bro. I, in my opinion, he is the greatest shooting center of all time. You know what I'm saying? And, and I was listening to, it was after the All-Star game, and I forget whose broadcast I was listening to. They were on the road. The Timberwolves were on the road, and it might have been against Dallas or something. Somebody was was very mad that Cat crowned himself as the greatest shooting center of all time. There's nobody even close, in my opinion, for what he does, at the volume that he does, and how he does it. Bro is hitting step-back threes at near seven foot. Stop it. Stop it. He does it like that, bro. And, and he played this game so very perfectly early in the game. Uh, shout out to Jakob Pertle. He was letting him, you know, shoot. Not the right thing to do for Carl Anthony Towns. We talk about the guy that just won the three-point shootout a couple weeks ago. He was hitting it. And then Jakob Pertl start to close out. Carl Anthony Towns drives right past him because he doesn't have the foot speed. Pertl doesn't have the foot speed to keep up a cat. So it's like, oh, okay, you got to pick your poison. Do I want to give him the three or do I want to give him the layup? And they're like, okay, Pop is like, okay, your, your, your shift is up, Hodel. We're going to put Zach Collins in. Zach Collins was a deer in the headlights, bro. He having nightmares about Carl Anthony Towns right now because he was putting him on the low block. He was driving past him. He was cutting back door, and he was hitting threes in his face. There was one play specifically where, where it was off of inbounds um, under his own basket. Cat flared out to, like, Flared out to like the um the hash, three-point hash, and he was calling for the ball. And then he V-lined to the rim. Back door. Boom. Layup. And and, and uh Zach Collins was like, hmm, like he was visually frustrated. And then later in the game, he got um he got teed up because he stepped over Patrick Beverly. This man got into Zach Collins' head so much. It was ridiculous. And a 60 piece. And and this team has been it's been crazy. It's it's wild because uh, people know that I got this thing that's called the um, the Cardio Hall of Fame. So if a player plays, I always say 20. 20 minutes gets 0, 0.0 rebounds, 0 assists, 0 blocks, 0 steals, 0 everything across the board. They uh, become a member of the Cardio Hall of Fame. It is the Tony Snell Hall of Fame. It is the Joel Anthony Hall of Fame. And today, Malik Beasley, he was 36 seconds away from being a Hall of Famer. He, he didn't get those last seconds, but he, he didn't do anything. Um, and that was just coming off a game a little while ago where he had like 11 threes or something like that. It's just like, which version of him will you get? But he's been really good recently, and so have the Minnesota Timberwolves. It's so it's a good story. I, I, like, I think at each conference, right, if I'm thinking about good stories, it's Cavaliers. Cavaliers for the Eastern Conference. And now West, I'm, the Memphis Grizzlies are a great story too, but it's like the Memphis Grizzlies and the Minnesota Timberwolves are Mark II. Um, Carl, I was just listen, listening to um, Patrick Beverly. He was on J.J. Reddit's podcast, Old Man in the Three. And I vividly remember when he got traded or signed, whatever you want to, I think he was traded to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, Patrick Beverly was like, I haven't missed the playoffs in my entire career. I don't plan on doing it now. And he got memed out of this world for it. And here we are, you know, with, with 12, 13 games left of the season, they're in the playoffs. 
and they they're not gonna fall out. It, at the very minimum, the play in, they're not gonna fall out, and it's a great story. Um, even today, like Anthony Edwards had five points, but you could tell he was super excited for his boy Cat to drop a sixty piece. It's an unselfish team with some good leaders and 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 Cat. Unfortunately for Cat, uh, the way the NBA works, he'll probably he'll probably be an All NBA third team player just because the center position is like. It's either going to be Jokic or Embiid, one or the other, and then Cat. You can make an argument for Rudy, kind of, but I think Cat kind of took that third place. Um, and I guess you can make an argument for Bam, too, but I think Cat has solidified himself in that third spot. And I know there's conversations on whether or not um, they should add Joel or, or Jokic to a forward spot, and I'm very anti that. It is okay that one of them has to be on the second team. It's still a great honor. You know what I'm saying? Let it continue to be two guards, two forwards, and one center, or get rid of positions completely. You don't have to add forward spot to Joel or Embiid because they literally have they don't play those positions. You know what I'm saying? I guess there was a period of time, just a, a couple game stretch where Joel and Andre Drummond were playing minutes together, but that's it. You know what I'm saying? Who who would that even be? Has Boogie and Nikola Jokic shared minutes together this season since Boogie has been there? I don't think so. So he's not a forward. He's never been a forward. It's okay that one of them is on the second team. Or, again, get rid of all the positions so both of them can be on the first team because those are the top two, two of the top three performing players of the season. The Draymond Green effect. Now, um, they were going against the Washington Wizards who are a little bit down in the luck right now. They're still trying to find themselves. I think this is a wash season with Bradley Beal being now. They're just trying to incorporate um, Chris Stapps for Zingas, and it looks like he didn't have a bad game. I didn't watch this game. To be honest, I didn't watch this game, but I do see that Steph Curry had 47, and I'm going to credit that to um, – you got to make your shots, but I'm crediting that to, to Draymond Green without watching a single second. Uh, the Bulls are back bad, man. It sucks. The Bulls are back bad, and it hurts my heart. You know, I ah, the season was going so good. As Caruso came back, and we win a game. And then we lose to the Kings. Now, I, I want to show tremendous amount of love to, to De'Aaron Fox. I never sold my De'Aaron Fox stock. on my. I have a, a thing here with all of my graded cards or some of my graded cards. There's a lot of De'Aaron Fox in there. I ain't never sold my stock. That's the homie. That's the guy. And he sits the trade. It's been working. It's He's been working. The team itself, they were on four-game losing streak going into this one. They win this one. But he has been great. And, I mean, it's I guess it's a tale of, like, two backcourt players that can't play together. Um, did they make the right decision for keeping Fox over Tyrese? Only time will tell. But it just seems like since the trade, both of the two players have been phenomenal in their roles. And today, De'Aaron Fox is phenomenal in his role. The boy gets to the rim at will at this point. The mid-range jump shot is looking good. And he even hit some threes tonight. Bulls defense, not good. Bulls offense, not good either. <laughs> One of the other has to be good. And so far, it hasn't been. Um, not losing hope. I still love my Bulls. And I still love watching the play. But, God, it was it was, it was was tough today. It was definitely tough. So, our stat that said, um, with the Lakers scoring 12 points in the first quarter, that is the lowest amount of points they've had in a first quarter in franchise history. I did not fact check it. I saw it on Twitter. I, I don't know if it's true, but if that is, that's a wild-ass statistic, Lakers. Come on, man. I feel like y'all be breaking hella records in the wrong way this season. You got to do something. And lastly, let's talk about Bucks versus Jazz. Um, a little, it felt like a playoff game. It definitely felt like a playoff game. I was waiting for somebody to tweet me these stats because I just feel like when we get down the stretch... The, the Jazz's offense just goes trash. It's just so much of like, hey, Donovan, please save us. And that's just, that's not, I don't like that. I don't like that. It should not be shouldered on him that much. And it's just, I, I don't know. I'm looking for the statistic. I was hoping somebody tweeted at me because somebody tweeted at me like a month ago. And I was wondering if it still stayed the same. So let me know in the comment section about the Utah Jazz closing offense when they're, let's say, tied with three minutes to go or down by one or up by one with three minutes to go. Because I felt very confident that the Bucks are going to win this game because I don't trust the Utah Jazz in the last couple minutes of a game. It's a lot of Donald. I love Donovan Mitchell. I absolutely love Donovan Mitchell, but it can't just be him. Somebody else on that team has to make themselves a threat. And today, you saw that with, with the Bucs, right? Um, it could be Giannis down the stretch. It could be Chris down the stretch. Or it could be Drew Holiday who continues to go crazy in fourth quarters. I think he ended up scoring 12 points in the fourth quarter alone. It's just like you need to figure out a way. It's okay with your star player having the ball in his hands for sure. But the other people have to make themselves a threat. You got you got to get some more shooters. You got to do something. It's just like and shout out to Javon Carter for hitting the free throws to ice the game. Um, he did that in another game early the season that was on national TV. It's like, ooh, do we want the ball in Javon's hands? Yep. 
Clutch free throw shooter. Give give it to him. Give him the badge. Clutch shooter. He got it. I think that's wraps. Um, I was trying to figure out if other things were happening in the NBA that that are storylines, but I can't think of anything. So we'll move on. Um, baseball is back. I, I just I just saw the dip in the amount of people that are watching this video. Can you mention baseball and everybody click? Baseball is back, and I cannot express to you how excited I am. Um, I don't know if I'll be making videos. Not I wouldn't I won't be making videos here, but I do have another channel for baseball. I don't know if I'm gonna be making videos this season. Regardless, irregardless, I'm just super excited. The baseball Twitter account has been going crazy. I'm just having a lot of fun looking at the signings and trades and stuff, and super excited, man. Hopefully, me and the homies could get tickets to opening game or opening day for the White Sox, of course, because. Who, where else Wrigley you want me to go to Wrigley nah I'm good uh, for the White Sox this season I've been binge watching Attack on Titan and I mean like binge binge watching I think I watched the first second and half of the third season in three days you ask why a recap has not been done in a minute maybe that's why I've done nothing but watch Attack on Titan um, because listen some of y'all remember the OGs of the channel remember when I was in college and I was in my parents apartment I had an Attack on Titan poster. That was like after season one-ish. And then I have this, this tendency of watching a show and then stop watching it once I caught up. So when season two of Attack on Titan came out, I forgot it existed kind of. And I never made the effort to go for it. And uh, some people were like, Kenny, season three is peak, peak anime cinema. Does that make sense? That makes sense? Probably not. I understand why. <laughs> I probably won't sleep tonight until I finish season three. I'm, that, that's how I'm feeling tonight. You feel me? Uh, so yeah, shout out to y'all for getting me back on the attack on Titan. Ranking of Kings just did a number on me emotionally, so I was like, you know what? I need another emotional anime that could get me, um, and that's what Attack on Titan has been. 